welcome everybody. We are talking to Paul Reed Smith, uh, CEO and founder of PRS Guitars. How are you doing today, Paul? It's good. It's nice to talk to you. Likewise. How, how are things on your side of the world? Um, not too bad. It's um, it's pretty dark already, um, other than in where you are right now, right now but uh, pretty good. 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 Um, so uh, my first question would be, um, obviously, uh, right now we are in pretty challenging times with Corona and everything. Um, and I'm interested to know uh, what exactly you guys are doing. I mean, you're having a production facility. So what are you guys doing to keep everybody safe? What kind of security measures are you taking at this point? We wear these. Yeah. <laughs> um, we stay apart from each other as much as we can, although that's hard. Right. Um up until yesterday, everybody got their temperature taken every day coming in. Um, everybody says if anybody in their family or anybody they live with has been tested positive. Um, we have plexiglass in between, you know, barriers in between the workstations. Um, the governor's on the phone on, on the TV today uh, talking about more safety measures. Um, our restaurants, the tables are farther apart. Um, there's a real desire to get back to normal life, but that didn't go so well. So we're going to have to back up a little bit. Um, right. I think we're being careful. And uh, we've had friends with it. And, you know, we're being careful. I, I think that uh, there's someone right that I can see from here who's wiping down handles and taking out the garbage and we're trying to be careful. Sounds good. Yeah. Sounds, sounds very good. So, um, obviously, uh, PRS has been, uh, a pretty innovative, uh, company in the past couple of years, you've flipped many stones. You've explored a lot of things. What's, what are the things that keep you motivated and, and continuing that? Where do you want to go? Happy customers, happy artists, happy <laughs> customers, happy artists, happy customers. Look, here's the problem. I don't like history kicking my ass. I don't enjoy it. I don't enjoy um, a guitar that was made by one of my teachers out doing um, our stuff. I don't enjoy it. And so I asked Jimmy Herring, the great guitar player, I said, well, why do you play up here? He says, because these guitars will do things my vintage guitars won't do. And that, you know, we've got some real successes right now in terms of artists that have been playing vintage guitars their whole lives. And now they're starting to play PRSs, not because uh, they don't want to play the vintage guitar, but because the PRS is doing things for their hands and their sound and their career that they enjoy. And for me not to be motivated by that, it'd be nuts. I mean, we love guitars, don't you? I mean, you wouldn't be doing this interview to love guitars. There's something magic about them. And I'm very motivated by um, all that I just brought up. I don't want to repeat myself, but I can tell you that like the 85 guitars that we've just shipping, oh my God, please plug one in. The Dragons we just shipped, please plug one in. I mean, we make these beautiful guitars and then please plug it in. Yeah. I mean, that, that's, a good, that's a good reason to be motivated. Uh, happy faces and, and happy players. Well, you know, that's... For me, that's enough. That's uh, 100%. Unhappy customers and unhappy artists would be bad. Oh, yeah, 100%. <laughs> 100%. Um, do you think there is... I want to sleep well at night. Yeah, exactly. With your guitar laying right beside you. No, 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 no. That's my wife. That's different. Don't go there. I don't bring the guitar to bed. Go on. Next. Next. Uh, is there, do you think that there's a, a field in, in guitar development that hasn't been explored yet or hasn't been explored deeply enough? Maybe. I don't know. Uh, recently, I mean, it all started with the Floyd Rose Tremolo. That was an investigation. The seven strings has been an investigation. The eight strings has been an investigation. The baritones has been an investigation. Um Making double cutaway guitars that sound like single cutaway guitars has been an investigation. The world's been chasing PAFs and P90s and strap pickups forever. Um, uh, used to be that the only gain the, that you could get out of an amp was a, 
Mesa Boogie or a Marshall 50, and now everybody's got floor pedals with so much gain you can't even deal with it. Now they're back in the game in the amp down. So the pedals got too much gain. Um, yeah, there's investigation after investigation after investigation. Do I think they're going to stop? No. Do I think that a good guitar is a good guitar? Yes. Do I think they're tools to do a job? Yes. Can you tune a regular guitar down to D? Yes. Uh, let's go back to machine gun. That would be D to D on a 25 and a half inch scale. That was an investigation. Yeah. True. I mean, you know, I, 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 people are investigating radiuses on fretboards. They're investigating all kinds of things. You know, I, I don't think it's going to stop, but guitar makers are like violin makers. They experiment their whole lives and then they settle down. Yeah. That's yeah, that's true. I mean, I'm asking uh, also because I mean the 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 topic of sustainability uh, when it comes to wood is becoming like more and more a thing, and people are looking for alternative materials and alternative woods and all kinds of all kinds of things. And it's I know it's difficult to get away from a from a good piece of mahogany. That's 100. percent But uh, you know, is is that something that might be worth exploring? Uh, like alternative woods that would give you I think that the amount of alternatives woods we offer have been extraordinary. There was a year where they only used coca bola headstock veneers and fretboards. Um, we've been doing a lot of it. Uh, private stock ships uh, wildly different stuff every day. Um, the 85 guitars have uh, Guatemalan rosewood fretboards, which is not usual for our industry. Mm -hmm. um, there's about 35 different kinds of rosewood in the world. Most of them are bushes. Uh, so, you know, yeah, I've looked into a lot of it. Look, I want to do the Home Depot challenge. Now, you don't have Home Depot where you are, do you? No, we don't. We have similar things, but we don't have Home Depot. What's it called where you are? They're called Bauhaus. Uh, or the Bauhaus challenge, where the guitar makers all walk in and make a guitar out of there. What's not known is that um, the two by fours in those stores in America are made out of red spruce, which is the same thing you make the most expensive acoustics out of. Yeah. I, I'm sorry, I could make a guitar in, in, out, of, out of that stuff. I, you know, the challenge, who's going to judge it? Is it really a waste of time? How are you going to make the pickups? You're going to take electric drills apart, you know. Uh, uh, <laughs> But the, the aluminum for the bridges and the and the brass for the bridges and the everything else is there. I I I would enjoy it. I'm not worried about the different kinds of woods. What I'm worried about is the sustainability part. We don't buy woods that um, is not repeatable. We're not trying to buy things that um, are not repeatable. A lot of the mahogany um, that we were getting in South America, they were only taking out one tree per acre and leaving all the seed trees. Right. Um, there are so many Brazilian rosewood trees that are growing in Brazil right now. They've replanted so heavy. We're going to be loaded with this stuff in 30 years. Wow. Um, but for us, you know, we only, uh, we were digging up stumps that we've been sitting in the ground for a hundred years. If the stump's been in the ground for a hundred years, it's reclaimed wood. And we do reclaimed wood, you know, from all kinds of stuff. I, I'm not worried about it from my position because we're very, very diligent and careful. And I'm not worried about it from the uh, the guitar industry's position. I went to India once, mm -hmm. and the trees were all being brought to a tiger preserve. And I said, where are they coming from? They said, well, Paul, we have these things called monsoons. And when the rains, the tree falls over, and the people collect the dead tree instead of letting it rot, and they auction it off at a government place. Now, I don't think the tree coming down in a monsoon and rotting – I'd rather make a guitar out of it. It seems okay to me. Cutting a live tree, that's different. So yeah. I went and checked myself. Okay. Sounds sounds good. Um, while we're talking about uh, like all these different woods, do you think there is a, a, there is a correlation between uh, the optics, the optical wood structure and their resonant behavior in your experience? Or is that totally unrelated? No, they're completely related, but in the end, it's how much water has it, does it have in it and how much resin is crystallized. So if you go in the attic of your house, the, you ever see the resin at, coming out of the, 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 uh, the two by sixes that hold the roof up? You ever see the little resin coming out of it? You ever been up in, in the attic? 
I would have need to to check again. Hopefully not. Yeah, well, let me tell you, it, the, it oozes this resin and it turns to amber, which is rock hard. Mm -hmm. And to me, getting the water out and getting the resins crystallized is more important than the species. Although, I don't think balsa wood's going to make a very good guitar. No. <laughs> and, and I once tried to make a guitar out of lignum vitae. That didn't go very well either. Okay. It was just too hard. You couldn't get the water out. So... Some of the woods we use take three, four years to dry to keep it from cracking. Um, you know, I, eh, you're asking really good questions. Why don't you come here and we'll give you a tour for your show and, and we'll talk about every single wood and, and how we dry it and what the you know, sustainability is of every single one. I would, I would love to. I'll, I'll, tell you what, I'll give you an example. Yeah. Curly maple. Uh, comes from America and from Croatia, Bosnia, those kind, you know, Italy, those kinds of places. In America, the, the forests in America are in better condition than they were 100 years ago. The way our settlers made money in this country is they chopped every tree down three times, which wise the trees and the forest aren't that much bigger than that because they chopped it down 60 years ago. Yeah. Right now, the forests are in pretty good shape and the curly maple supplies are pretty good. Okay. Um how about acoustics uh, and basses? Same thing applies. Like as yeah, far I think so. as the same thing applies. I think so. I think so. Uh, look, the way they cut spruce in Switzerland, they wait till it's the you know frozen and the right the hail of the moon, and you know they they ask permission from the tree and all that stuff. You and by the way, I picked up those pieces. It rang like a bell. Supposedly, okay. these good trees in the stand when they're standing up you hit them with a baseball bat and they ring so you know if you're not clear cutting and you're being very very judicious about you know taking out only one tree once in a while and not hurting the forest it seems okay to me when you're clear cutting that's a different animal and putting up palm oil which is what's been going on around the world that's really difficult yeah um how about uh, thermal treatment? I mean, that's that's been a thing for a couple of years now as well. I mean, everybody has some kind of you know baked, caramelized, uh, cooked. You mean you mean over overcooking the chicken? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, kind of. But uh, yeah, it's... So, the Stradivari violins I saw weren't torrified. I thought they sounded all right. Yeah, um, you're look, right. Yeah. <laughs> I, this sounded right to me. I, Torification, the way, way it's done is they take it and they put it in a vacuum and they heat it up to 400 degrees. Because there's no air, it doesn't burn. It just chars, right? right. If, if you heat a chicken up to 140 degrees, 180 degrees, it's going to cook, but it's not going to turn brown. It turns brown at 400, right? My experience is that putting woods in ovens is a really good idea. And we have ovens all over the one side of our factory, but we don't heat it up hotter than about 180 degrees, 190 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. Below boiling. It doesn't brown it. Now we've been using some torrified woods because the market loves it so much. It's not a bad idea. It's a good idea because yeah. you're drying the crap out of the wood. They use that word in wood and in, in where you're from. Never mind. In, uh, in Germany. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, would, I, I said dry the crap out of the wood, whatever. Um, so I think it's a good idea. Um, but we have been drying the woods bone dry forever. Yeah. And, you know, this is not a new idea. Um, the best place, in my experience, to dry wood is in an attic of a house because it gets up to 140 degrees in the daytime and 80 degrees at night, 140 during the day and back down. And you do that over and over and over again, you got a piece of musical instrument wood. Okay. The difference is it's obviously going to take a lot longer than putting it in an oven and leaving it there for what? How how much time does it does it take if you say well, a fingerboard degrees? can dry overnight at 190 degrees. Yeah. But we, we don't. If you go that fast with a piece of maple, it'll crack. You can't go that fast. So what you do it in stages. You know, you'll do it at 75 degrees on sticks for four months, and then you'll put it in the oven for 100. And, 
five degrees for a month and then you'll put it in another oven 135 degrees for a month and then you pull it out and it's dry as a bone okay what you don't want is to case harden it where the outside's too dry and the inside's wet and when you cut it open it starts to cup and look like a potato chip it's not a good idea uh, okay okay good to know if i ever try it <laughs> look here's the problem When you buy a guitar, you don't know how the truss rod was put in. You don't know how the woods were dried. You don't really know how they glued the nut on. You don't know how they glued the frets on. You don't know how the fret calculations were to make sure it plays in tune. You, there's a lot you don't know. There are things you do know. You know how the neck feels, you know how it looks, you know how it sounds when you plug it in. There's a lot of things you know, but you're going to have to find a guitar maker you trust to do all the things that you don't know about. Right. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't think sticking the truss rod in a plastic tube to get it to quit rattling is a good idea. It deadens the neck. But you don't know that when you bought the guitar. Yeah. But if you get out a stopwatch, like you're doing a race, and the, and the guitar rings for 15 seconds, put it back. If it rings for 45 seconds, buy it. Yeah. Yeah, you can't go wrong with that. I agree. Yeah. Um, talking about... <laughs> You're wearing a reverb shirt. I'm sorry? You're wearing a reverb shirt. Yeah, I'm a reverb employee by day and an interviewer by night. <laughs> uh, I should be wearing a PRS shirt. Go on. So talking about PRS models, the latest model, the 85. Yeah. While you were developing it, what was the most interesting like aspect or discovery you came across? Oh, those tops are outrageous. Those tops are ridiculous. They're the size of my fingers, the curls, right? Um, but when we were developing the instrument, that finish, they did one of those in private stock, and I thought it was the most beautiful finish I'd ever seen. It was a stained glow burst that also had a sprayed uh, microburst on the outside. I, it was the prettiest thing I'd ever seen in terms of a finish on a guitar. It looked like an old Lloyd Lore mandolin. Oh, wow. Um, have you seen a picture? I've seen a picture on the website, yes. They're just, they're breathtaking in person. So that was fun. The tone of them, I adore. Um, I have one that I'm going to have to buy from the company that you're going to rip out of my dead hands when I die. <laughs> I like the guitar. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's kind of the thing. I mean, uh, lot, lots of your, your models, they're like known for that dipped into liquid glass kind of look because ah. they're so they're so high uh, ah. Ah. <laughs> you know what i mean they, they look pretty they look pretty uh but, well, i, but, I want them to sound and feel good that's that's true they also do that um this time you went for a different kind of a kind of finish Is that well true? so the whole factory is is using nitro top coat now okay yeah. nitro cellulose top coat And the guitars still look like they're dipped in glass. That finish is going to crack over time. It's going to get really brittle, like an old vintage guitar. Okay. And it, there's a there's a thing that comes with it that says if if the finish cracks, don't send it back because we're not going to refinish it. That's the way it was meant to be. You bought it knowing that. Um, you know, in the 50s, Gibson would have to ship only in the warm days because the guitars would show up at the stores cracked before they ever sold them. Right. Okay. So, you know, I, it's a new thing for us. Um, we're experimenting with these old, old traditional finishes. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't think the dipped in glass thing has gone away. I still think they look outrageous. But look, 80% of information is brought in with people's eyeballs. Yeah. The rest of it's how it sounds, how it feels, how it smells, you know, the vibe, all that stuff. In the end, If you only like the way it looks, you don't like the way it sounds or plays, you got yourself a problem. So I'm always so focused on how it plays and sounds. Yeah, I 100% agree. But the, yeah, but the idea behind it obviously is that over time it kind of develops more of a of a more of a tone, more of a. Yeah, like, that'd be the idea, uh, but I'm enjoying them the day they're made. <laughs> I've been cracking up. I mean, literally, we've been laughing. It's. I'm afraid people are going to buy them and they're not going to plug them in. I almost put a note in every case and said, please plug me in, please yeah. plug me in, please. 
I'm begging you, please plug me in. Most of the dragons that we sold, they sounded outrageous. Neil Sean from Journey got one. He goes, oh, Paul, I love the way this guitar sounds. But he, you know, he likes plugging stuff in. Right. Obviously, he's a player. That's, uh, yeah. Um, which brings me to my final question, which is about basses. So uh, PRS basses, obviously, they do have a great reputation, but they're not quite there, there yet in terms of popularity than the guitars. That's um, true. Um, why do you think that is? And is there a chance that you'll see, that we'll see like a wider variety of, of PRS basses in the future, maybe different models or? I'd like to see that. We're working on it. Um, every time I see Jeff Beck, there's a PRS bass sitting there. Right, yeah. You know, I, yeah so she she can't rip those things out of her dead hands. I, I You know, I, Rhonda's been spectacular that way. Bass players and guitar players are different kinds of ducks. Yeah. I like the five string when I'm in the studio. Gary's five string, the Granger five string sounds spectacular every time I plug it in with the EQ flat. I never have to futz with it. Um, I, I would like to see more of that out of us over time. You know, when we're a guitar company. When we make basses, that's great. But when COVID shows up, you have to go back to being a guitar company, and, right. you know, because uh, you have to back up sometimes. COVID has been very interesting here. Guitars have been selling like crazy in right. our country during COVID because people are home and they want to have something to do, you know. Mm -hmm. But I, I agree with you with the basses, but I'm very pleased with what we have. Yeah, sounds good. Um, how about amps? I mean, they're getting better. Have you uh, plugged in the Sanzera 20? Um, I haven't. Have I, you plugged into a Mark Tremonti MT15? Uh, that I have. It's a great sounding amp. I've even <laughs> plugged into a JMOT. Yeah, did you like both of those amps? Yes. Yes, I did. So the Tremonti MT15 was the only time I ever had a product that the dealer, when they saw it, They said, I'll take some. They never hesitated. They didn't even, you didn't have to talk them into it. They'll take them. It's the fastest selling through amp we have at the dealers. They come in and they go out the door. Yeah. So um, we have a version of Toman over here called Sweetwater. I know, I know. And um, uh, I was told it's the fastest selling amp they have. So amps are getting better. Uh, I've got a whole list of people that are using the amps that you'll know about over time. Um, I just sent some pretty famous people amps and they, right now it's their going favorite. So we'll see how things go. Um, watching John Mayer play those J mods with the Grateful Dead was a, was a hoot. Um, when last time John Mayer went out, the other guitar player was playing David Grissom amps, um, DG amps. Mm. Um, When we went to China, all we were using was Sanzeras, and it was a big, powerful band with little teeny, teeny amplifier with Mike in front of it, taking everybody's head off. <laughs> so, yeah, it's going better and better and better. That's that's great to hear. Well, uh, Paul, thanks for coming out the time. Um, I'm sure you're uh, have a pretty, pretty. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Yes, sure. sure. What's going on in the market in Germany? What's going on? What's the, what's the general vibe over there? Is it Kempers and pedal boards or what is it? It's, um, I can tell you that amps are coming back, but they come back in con convenient packages. Like, as you mentioned, the Mark Tremonti amp, it's a convenient package because it's small, right. it's powerful. It has enough wattage to get you through in a band. That, that's not an issue. So no, I, I think that off. I think that's coming. I think that's coming back. And for people who need a a super portable f solution that doesn't need someone to carry stuff around, they are going the camper route. Um, but um, I think it's not that many people as uh, as uh, people might think. It's not that many players that are like, oh, I need a camper, or I need a camper floorboard, or I need an X effects. Um, I see loads of people with pedal boards and amps very going back to the traditional thing. I love it because I'm one of these guys, you know, I've seen people be more attached to their pedal board than their guitar. Oh yeah. It's an addiction. 
It's, it's <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's 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 like a, a, a you know two hundred fifty dollar piece of heroin, right? I got a new pedal. Yeah. I need another pedal. I need another pedal. Oh my uh, god! It's absolutely <laughs> it's absolutely crazy. The thing the thing about it is that, um, I mean, uh, it exploded over the past couple of years. There's so many companies making so many different pedals. I agree. Uh, it's um, it's it's kind of fun. Why not? It's fun, and it's it's such an inexpensive item, you know. You you buy it, and if you don't like it, you can sell it for almost the same, and it's easy to ship, and you know whatever. <laughs> it's always a joy to see you, talk to you. Thank you very much. I hope this um, goes well for um, Dieter, and yes, it it definitely will. I'm pretty- you send them. You send them my absolute loving best. Okay. And my and uh, I shall send you greetings from Detlef. Your fellow employee here in Germany. Have I spoke to him this morning. Have you guys met? Uh, we've met a couple of times. Um, yeah. um, I'm I'm working in the industry for like 22 years now, so we've crossed paths many times. The man's got one hell of a work ethic. Oh my yeah. god! Yeah. Very All true. right, to everybody in Germany, it's a pleasure to be able to talk to everybody from America, from from Maryland. Here we are. You know, you're going to have to get on an airplane again. You know that, right? Yeah. At some point, I'm, when traveling is a thing again, I'm coming over. That's for sure. All right. Well, it'll be a pleasure to see you. We'll go to dinner. All right. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you very much.